One of the phrases I really like is there are lies, damn lies, and then there's benchmarks. And I say that because, you know, benchmarks can be an artificial experience to what you may actually be using it for. So we can see certain performance things from benchmarks and they do provide some value, but they're not always definitive and they may not represent your use case in the same way that you think they would. Uh, so you can say, hey, the benchmark said it would do this, but when I actually used it, I ran into this problem. So let's talk about real world use of the free NAS Mini XL Plus and in video editing. Uh, that's something that came up because I thought it was interesting. I like Linus's video on uh, the Jellyfish Fryer all SSD server. And by the way, if you haven't been to Serve the Home, uh, great website, excellent enterprise reviews on there. So I thought it was cool that they uh, had the Serve the Home people on there. Also, uh, they did use FreeNAS, spotted on there right away. Now, uh, I would love to build a 28000 I think that was what he said the price was, uh, $28,000 all-flash FreeNAS system for video editing. And as you get into YouTube, you realize there is a definite need to have a, a way to store all the data you create. But um, for many of us that aren't at the level that Linus is at, uh, we can't, or he has KBHD in here, we can't afford $28,000 devices uh, for that. You know, hoping to get there one day, but that's not my today situation. So let's talk about the free NAS Mini XL Plus configured with and someone's gonna cringe a little, but these are really reasonably priced. Uh, these are 5,400 RPM Western Digital Reds. So this is not a real expensive drive. It's not a really fast drive. It is a solid, reliable NAS drive. I had, I've had a lot of these installed. We've got a lot of systems that are storing data for our clients um, built with these, and they've been really, really reliable. They're low heat, low energy. Um, they're great NAS drives. I've, the whole Western Digital Red series uh, has proven to be quite reliable overall. They're not high performance though at 5400 RPM. I will throw that out there. But when you configure them in a free NAS system, and we'll go ahead and look at how we have this configured. Go to pool. Status. We have a RAID Z2 config. So with a RAID Z2 with eight drives, uh, there's redundancy, and we're going to get some performance out of it because we're sharing the load across the drives. So editing video is not going to be tragically bad. That's important. So this is going to be an affordable for those of us that can't afford the $28,000 high-end servers way to edit and store and archive our video. There's a lot of people getting YouTube and there's all the struggles of figuring out what camera and gear and what you're going to do on YouTube. But then the storage people kind of put off to the side. And even some of the bigger YouTube channels, Linus uh, has gone through some of them. And yeah, they, they admit to all having lost data because saving it just on your computer can be a problem and a risk when you have a single drive. Um, for doing this. This is just hard drives fail. That's a statistic. Having a rate rate is for a reason. And even with this, you should be backing it up somewhere else. I do have my own two free NAS set up. So I have one free NAS replicating to another one. So I'm at least that level, but at the minimum, having at least a rate array to dump all your data to uh, and edit from is ideal. And the free Max Mini XL Plus having a 10 gig and I have a 10 gig switch does help that. Now there is a way to do this and maybe I'll do a, this in a future video where you can put a 10 gig card in your computer and then directly connect it to the FreeNAS Mini so you don't have to have a switch, but you'd have to do some IP assignments um, and make that work without a switch. They will direct connect, but uh, that's for a later video. This is at least assuming that you have the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus, a 10 gig switch. I'm using the Unify one and a 10 gig card in your computer. And my computer has the uh, Asus 10 gig card in it. Specifically this one right here, the Asus XGC 100 c 10 gig adapter. Um, it's, someone has commented that they get a little warm. It hasn't really been a problem. It seems to work perfectly fine and doesn't have a problem transferring at 10 gig. It hasn't really been an issue. All right, back to the box here. So with this configured and I got the dashboard pulled up here, we can see we're at 197 and I have this right here. We've got, uh, net data opened up at 197 and now we can show you here is this you can see this is a smb share 3.197 video editing test and i actually i'm a linux guy so i do edit in uh, caden live so here's what it looks like when you're just scrubbing around through data and this is only shot at 1080 this is not stressing it out in any measure. So uh, this is probably, I can edit fine. I can jump ahead, jump and preview things, play the video. That's not gonna be a problem. That's not where you're gonna be uh, more interested. Let's go and look at some 4K video. So I, let's grab something off my GoPro and see how quickly I can open it. And this is a single 4K video. I don't even know which one this is. All right, me goofing off on my motorcycle at a car cruise. 
it's seeking ahead. It's it's really immediate here. Obviously, no pausing, no problem. Let's jump to another video. Play that one fine. Randomly grab another one here. Let me goofing off at the office. All right, and we go back over here. There's all that stress it did on there because someone said, "Oh, they add them CPUs." Yeah, they they're they're not going to have a problem handling uh, moving the data around like that. You do see you know a spike here in some of the traffic sent. So now let's go a step further and let's say let's get a bunch of videos. So I think I can open them like this, 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 and it will open all four at once. Now the computer may choke on it because it's going to open all these 4K videos at once. Oh, but they're all playing. So how many is that? My computer's choking, but let's see what the free NAS is doing. Sending me all the data, completely not stressing out. We're still sitting in all of a couple percent of CPU and no problems. The disk read spread across, not a problem. And we're... 170, 180, 185, it's still going up with 4K video, playing them all at once. Here's our network traffic. I, my computer's hesitating. It does, this is just, mine's an older i7 computer here. So, uh, but yeah, oh, here's our CPU actually getting a little bit of usage. We've, we've hit the 3%, 3.6% mark. So if you're wondering if the Atom in real world use can handle it, uh, obviously that's not the problem people seem to think it is. And uh, like I said, the 4K, I know chokes on my, uh, but it's obviously not a problem. So real world, can I edit all of these videos? Sure. They're all playing perfectly fine. And I don't know why like this is burnouts and things like that. Welcome to, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a big car culture here in Detroit and people like spinning their wheels and that all that black you see is that. So that's just funny. But you see, other than my computer pausing a little bit playing those, it's not pausing because it's waiting on hard drive. The hard drive isn't even pinned out to its max potential here on the free NAS and neither is the processor. So when it comes to doing some of the editing, this is a video I'll be editing. This video will be uploaded before. This is showing how a non-surf works inside of there. Not a problem, but let's just, obviously I'm not gonna save it like this, but let's throw a 4K video file in. It's only reading the sound, which takes a second, but it's available immediately. Here's that video, not a problem. Here's another one. Not a problem. Now, granted, when you get to something like Linus or KBHD and you're shooting in not 4K, but 8K, you've now quadrupled the amount of data. So yeah, there's probably gonna be some slowdowns if you're shooting in 8K, but if you're using an Epic Red Dragon at 8K, $100,000 camera, I think that's what those cost roughly in that range uh, with the accessories and lenses and mount kits. Yeah, you can probably afford something more than a free NAS Mini XL Plus. You can go to one of the enterprise true NAS all flash arrays. There are categories uh, that will scale with you. But I just wanted to demonstrate that the free NAS Mini XL has no problems with 10 gig. And this is our peak with all those videos running that we did for the processor. Just nothing running, you know, four 4K video, four 4K video stream to my computer, even with my older i7 which uh, someone's gonna ask, so I'll pull it up. This is an i7-4770K at three and a half gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM in it. So I do not have a killer uh, fast machine that is uh, doing all this. My plan is to build a Ryzen for those that are asking, when am I gonna build it soon? When people uh, pay some bills I have outstanding, I will definitely be building a new Ryzen machine. The uh, performance is really nice. I'm excited about that for a video editing station. But for, but for now, uh, this i7 does get the job done. It renders things reasonably fast. And it's really not much stress on these two. We'll pull up the reports as well. It's not, here's where we speak, peak some data on here, but we are not uh, at the limits of this system, so to speak. Let me look at the CPU here. Yeah, we're far from the limits of this system in terms of uh, CPU and performance. We're mostly idling this thing, uh, even pulling all that video. So for video editing system, the FreeNAS Mini XPL is pretty affordable. The Western Digital Red uh, 5400 RPMs, what are those going for right now? Yeah, it looks like they're about a, still about the 115 each. So let's uh, see, you know, and this comes down to planning 
Uh, you can go all the way up to the 10 TBs, 12 TB, well, up to the 12. Kind of depends on uh, where your price point is. But uh, it's still an affordable way to build a system that will edit in 4K without having to break the bank. Because, I mean, yes, you can go pro if you need something faster and say, let's go up to the larger cache, 7200 RPM class. Uh, and the four TVs at the Pro start at 160, so not too much more. So it kind of depends on where your budget lies for storage planning. And someone will point out that, well, it's only a little more for the 7200 RPM. I see, yeah, but you got to multiply what if that little bit more is times eight. Uh, storage planning can be challenging. Storage planning is challenging because if you say, I think I need this much storage, you probably need more. And ideally, you should have at least one other machine that doesn't have to be as fast that you also are backing the data up to again, because even though you have a rate array, which protects to some extent, there's still more data or back it up in the cloud. Um, you know, you, you, I've done a video on this. You can take free NAS and say, hey, send it overall, send it all to Backblaze. Uh, that way you have one more backup of all of your data. Uh, so keeping redundancy is important, especially when you have offsite redundancy in case anything tragic happens to the environment that you're in. Uh, but I want to show that I, I currently edit, not on the Mini XL Plus. Unfortunately, I could send this one back. This was sent to us courtesy of the folks at IX Systems and FreeNAS. Uh, but I, I've showed the videos on the systems we have, the custom-built FreeNAS boxes we're using with 10 gig in them. That's what I'm running on right now uh, for my normal video editing, and it works wonderfully. I don't have any problem using FreeNAS for video editing. Um, obviously, if you're using Adobe or something like that, and you want the fancy plugins, the Jellyfish is kind of cool. Um, I never use a product, but I watch little videos and I think it's kind of a neat product. But uh, overall, I just want to make sure you, to let everyone know, yes, you can edit, edit on a 5400 RPM RAID array, real world usage, opening up all these videos. And I've this video, not well, not these ones, because I'll delete this. Uh, unless anyone wants to watch my cruise video, and if there's a demand for it, I'll put it on my other YouTube channel. It's not really content there. Uh, but no problem editing videos. I've been playing around with the last couple of days. I edited a couple of the, uh, this video is going to go on there, and a couple others that I may, before I have to send this back, will be edited using the FreeNAS Mini XL Plus. And of course, as i shown in the other video, it does have the SSD uh, you can add internally. So if you wanted to add a write cache or a read cache to it uh, to speed it up a little more, you can. But this video was done without those enabled purposely to show, you know, people who are budget conscious going, I don't have all the budget for all that. I just want to be able to do it. And if you're wondering if you can edit at one gig, yes, you can. I did test that. It is slower, of course. Um, it's one tenth the speed. So I highly recommend when you get into video editing, if you're doing anything in 4K and you're dealing with putting together a lot of multiple video files, the 10 gig one is a nice option. Option. And even if you're not using a 10 gig the same day you buy it, uh, being able to upgrade later is great versus trying to buy another one later that has 10 gigs, it's going to be a little more expensive. All right, this video will be edited on it, and you'll actually see this video before this, and uh, it's actively being edited right now. This one will be uploaded first. The Parrot one, which will be edited on the Mini XL Plus, and the Mini XL Plus video about the Mini XL Plus will be edited on that too. All right, thanks, and I'll leave links to the previous review if you didn't see it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.